Hello and welcome. I'm Alice and I work as a digital onboarding associate here in Pineo. In this video, you will get an introduction to the different settings and options that are available to you as a professional Pineo account administrator. We have divided this video into two parts, one focusing more on the basic settings and the other focusing more on advanced features such as API keys, extensions and applications. In the first part of the video, we will take a look at the differences between Pineo accounts, company settings and branding, and users and contacts. For the second more advanced part, we will go through how you can set up SSO and find your API keys. Then I will show you how you can use the Pineo desktop app version alongside with the Pineo printer. When you have logged in to a professional Pineo account, you will be able to see the dashboard view. In case you would be unsure whether you are an administrator or not, you can easily check it by clicking in on Configure. If you can see the options Company and Contacts, that means that you are an administrator. If you can only see the option Profile under Configure, then you have a user account. So now I will start off by logging into Pineo through app.pineo.com. Once logged in to a professional Pineo account, the first thing that you will be met with is the dashboard view. From here we can go to the left hand side, click configure and then select company. On the top here you can see an overview of the details of your company. Here you can change both the address as well as the name of your company in Pineo through clicking in on Edit Details. Due to legal reasons, you cannot change your company's VADIN. So if you would notice that your VADIN has been changed or that it's incorrect, then please reach out to your account manager. You can set the default language for your company. And I will go back and forth here a little bit just in order to show you where you can actually see the effect of this setting. In my company settings, the default language is set to English. If I now go in to create a new case file, as you can see here, the language that the system suggests firsthand is English. If I now go back into the settings and change the language to Danish, and then go in to create a new case file, now the system suggests Danish as the language for my case file. So by activating certain default settings and making these decisions, you as an administrator can actually help your users work more efficiently in Pineo. I would also like to mention that the language settings for their own account view is something that individual users can change under their own profile settings. Next, let us take a look at the security and privacy settings that are listed here. We do recommend enabling the option that is called Allow Transferring Ownership of Data on User Deletion. If your company does not have this enabled and you decide to delete a user, then all of their data will be deleted with them. And in most cases, it is not possible to retrieve this data. If you have this feature enabled and you choose to delete a user, then you will be met with a pop-up window asking you if you would like to transfer the data and to whom you would like to transfer the data. The second option on the security and privacy ensures that the function sensitive data will be activated in every new case file per default. The case file signing request expires option is simply the default to when a case file should no longer be available for signing. The next section that we will take a look at here is the data handling section. If the option of automatic data deletion is enabled, then your case files will automatically be moved to the recycle bin after the amount of time that you have selected here. Your deleted objects will then stay in the recycle bin unless you choose to activate to automatically empty the recycle bin. So if you have activated both of these and you have each one set to one month, then your case files will be deleted after a total of two months. 
case file settings, so the default reminder interval is simply how often a signer that has yet to sign will receive automatic email reminders from Pineo. Here we also have the domain field, which we will get back into in the advanced part a bit later on. The allowed signing methods here on the bottom of the page refer to the possible options that your signers will be able to see and then select on the signing page. Please be aware that if you were to activate more signing methods than what has been agreed upon in your contract, this might be billable. From here, let us take a look at how you can customize your Pineo account. So I will move into the branding tab that is listed up here. By customizing your Pineo account, you can use your company's logo and colors to make it more tailored to your organization. These settings will be visible for you and your colleagues in your professional Pineo account, and it will also be visible for your signers when they open the link sent from Pineo to sign their documents. You can choose the background, highlight and text color. You also have the option to upload your company's logo by clicking here. And you can also see the changes as you are making them in the preview window to the right. Here by the URL, you could, for example, add the link to your company's web page. Just to show you what this looks like, I have opened a signing link sent from Pineo. And on the top here is where the settings that you set up on your branding page will be visible for your signers. If a signer clicks on the logo up here to the right, they will be redirected to the web page since this has been added as the URL in the branding settings. Let us take a look at email templates. To access email templates, you can either select automate and then email templates or navigate to it up here in the top bar. Both users and administrators can create their own templates that will only be accessible to them. Administrators also have the option to make company-wide email templates that are accessible and for everyone to use within the company. When you see the portfolio logo next to your template title, it means that this is a company-wide email template. To make your own, simply click on Create New Company Template up here. And when you're setting up your template, you can use the merge fields that are listed here. These are very important and we will also use them in the email signature as I will show you after this. But let's say that you would like for the email that is sent out to the signer to actually state the expiration date. Then you can just add the merge field case file expiry and the system will automatically state the expiration date in the email to the signer. Once you have finished setting it up, do remember to click on create in order to save the template. And now let us take a look at the email signature. So I will navigate into the top bar here where it says email signature. This will be blank the first time that you open it. And since the signature template that you set up here will be shown for everyone within your organization who are using Pineo, we do recommend that you use the merge field sender name and sender email. These merge fields will automatically generate the right name and email address of the sender. Please note that there are no merge fields for phone numbers or titles. So what you put in here in your template will be shown for everyone. If you would like to use a phone number, then we do recommend using a more general phone number, so to the reception or likewise. It's important to add your company signature since the link that the recipients receive will be generated by a Pineo email address. It will only show the signer an email text with a link asking them to sign without perhaps knowing who sent it. And if your signers were to have any questions, then they will know who sent the case file and they will be able to contact that person directly. You can either try to copy and paste it in or structure it yourself, but do remember to edit in the merge fields. As an administrator in Pineo, 
you are responsible for creating the user account for your colleagues that will also be using Puneo. So let us take a look at how you can create and manage user accounts. To create a new user, simply click on Create New and fill in the name and the email address of the new user. You then select the role, so whether they should be a user or an administrator. We always recommend that you have at least two active admins for your account. You can also choose which login methods to activate for the user. Simply tick the box of the one that you would like to allow. We do recommend that you start off with the default classic login method, which consists of a username and a password. You can always update the login methods for your users or for your coworkers later on. So if you would like to make updates to an existing user, then click in on the three dots next to the name and select edit. From here, you can manage an existing user's rights role as well as their login methods. So here you can, for example, activate API keys or an electronic ID as a login method. If one of your coworkers have forgotten their login, then you can send them a reset link under the tab called Reset Credentials up here. So they will then receive an email with a link to update their password. Let's go back into the user overview and take a look at how you delete a user. Click in on the three dots and then select delete. You will then, if you have activated the option to transfer data, as we talked a bit about earlier, be met with this pop-up window where you can choose whom you would like to transfer the data to. Another feature that is only available to administrators is the contact book, and it's also listed here under configure. Contacts in Puneo functions in the way that when you send out case files and you are adding signers, then Puneo will give you suggestions based off your previous contacts that are stored in your contact book. Users do have the option to activate the feature to save new contacts under their own profile settings, and it looks like this but it's only administrators that can make updates to existing contacts, delete them, or manually add a contact. And now for the second part, where we will take a look at SSO, API keys, the desktop application, as well as the Pineo printer extension. So I will go into the company settings and we will take a look at the field that we previously skipped. The domain field is related to Microsoft Azure Active Directory. This feature enables users to log in to Pineo using the Azure login as a single sign-on method without you as an administrator having to invite every colleague one by one. Please remember to activate Microsoft as a login method for an existing user in case they plan on using Azure. Your Active Directory is identified by a unique string referred to as a tenant ID. You can find your tenant ID in your Microsoft account by going into Properties. Copy the ID from your Microsoft account and then paste it into Pineo. An Active Directory admin can then add the Pineo application and connect it to your Microsoft account. In our Help Center, we do have additional links to Microsoft where they go further into detail on how you can set this up. The link to our guide has been included here in the webinar handout. API keys are commonly used for logging in with your Pineo account in an integration. 
These API keys can only be activated by an administrator under the login methods for an individual user. Once activated, your user should be able to see this added tab called API keys appear under their own profile settings. Next, I also wanted to show you how you can make use of our desktop application. So it's up to you as an administrator if you would like to use this and if you would like to encourage your coworkers or users to also make use of it. But in order to use the desktop application, you will need to download it and install it on your computer first. In the desktop application, you can easily create and save a case file structure as a template and it includes fewer steps than the web application. It is only possible to send out case files with the desktop app. So in order to view your archive and see the case files that you have previously sent out, then simply go back to where we started in the web application, so app.paneo.com. To create a new template, first you will go through the regular sort of three-step process of creating a new case file. It is completely up to you how much information in terms of signers and documents that you would like to save in your template. But in order to save it, click in on advanced options and select save as a template. I have created a template example here. So to Locate this, I will go into the advanced options and then choose select template. Here you can also click in to view more details on the template and you can also delete a previously saved template. I will click on use template and as you can see here, all of the information that I had saved and included in my template has now been applied. The Pineo printer is an extension to the desktop application, and this will allow you to export any document from a program such as Google Docs or Words, so any program with a printer function, directly into Pineo as a PDF. So I will just go into the document that I have created, click on Print, and then set the destination to be the Pineo printer. If I now go back into the desktop application, as you can see here, the documents are being processed and uploaded. So the Paneo printer has now converted my file into the accepted format of a PDF. Do remember to select a document type once uploaded. And that was all that I had to show you in this video. Do remember that you can always contact us through the Help Center and the link to the Help Center with some helpful articles have been listed in the description below.